you guys obviously did a really good job of protection in this last game, but I, I wanted to ask you about one where where a rusher gets through and what that means to an offensive line when when uh, when when Ryan gets hit and throws uh, throws a touchdown pass um, on, on the play where he says "and one" to to Saffold. What's that mean to you guys that on the on the rare occasion where you let somebody through? he's able to take that hit, withstand that hit, and make a play, kind of a courageous play. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, that's a great question, and I, I, it makes you want to protect for the guy even more because you know he's tougher than nails, and you know that he's going to, you know, win at all costs. So when you let him down, it hurts, man. And um, so it, it's, it's a it's – a, um, it's, it's one of those things like we obviously as an offensive lineman, you hate getting a quarterback hit or sack or whatever those things are. And then you watch him, he'll, he'll stand that he'll stare at the bar down the barrel of a gun, take the hit and still deliver a strike. And you're like, man, we gotta, we gotta keep this guy clean. He's doing something really cool. Uh, uh, O'Hara was saying that uh, all, all quarterbacks kind of have a scar under their chin. Uh, no, no matter what, I imagine you guys want to, keep that as uh, as small and bloodless as as possible yeah we want to we want him to trust in us that he can go through a progression and do his job back there and you know there's only so many you, you know and he's tougher than crap we want to keep him healthy for one and we don't want him to get so beat up he loses his nerve you know so it's part of our job to keep him confident back there and trust that he has time to go through a progression and and not make those scars so so big and so deep that, you know, it, it starts making him second guess himself. Arden, if there's nobody else, can I keep going? Go for it. Rob's in here. Um, uh, Keith, you feel like that was a better pass protection game than run blocking game, or are they just overloading so much on, uh, on the run stuff that, uh, that there's only so much you can do at a, at a Sure. No, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the guys, how they protected this last game. And I, I definitely think we are cleaner in protection than we were running the ball. Um, you know, and so you always are looking for improvement and, and stuff like that. And we're certainly haven't arrived in protection and, and uh, you know, but we at least have something there that we feel like we're taking strides and, and, and want to want to keep going in terms of the run game. I, I think we're, we're just, you know, we're, we're falling into this trap of we're one or two guys away every run. And, and we know, uh, just as everybody knows in this league, one or two guys away isn't good enough. And so we really stress that it, it takes all 11 to run the football. And, and you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, I got to find a way to coach it better and, and, and so we can execute better and get 11 guys uh, on the same page. Really appreciate it. Good talking to you. You too. I have a few for you, Coach. Um, in Denver, when Taylor missed some time for injury and Ty stepped in briefly at left tackle, can you just talk about what he did well and kind of what he brings to the table? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's funny because I feel like this was the same questions that we would get with Dennis last year. And, you know, it's just such a relief to have um, – you know, some of the some of the backups we have here and that that includes Ty Smith and David Quisenberry and and uh, Jameel Douglas and a, and a bunch of guys, Daniel Munyer, on and on. So it's just having somebody like Ty who has a lot of game experience at a lot of different positions who, you know, can go in there and um, make all the calls and know what to do every play is just a. Uh, you know, it's a it's a luxury to have, honestly. And so I think he did a really good job when he stepped in for him, and and um, that's what's expected of him. And it's a it's a relief, not necessarily a relief, but it's a it's definitely a bonus having guys like that that can, um, you know, it, to a certain extent, plug and play, and and uh, you don't have to change and alter what you're doing. And back to Taylor, um, he came to the season talking about wanting to step up as a leader. Have you seen anything from him um, in regards to stepping into that leadership role? Has anything changed um, from last season? Yeah, I mean, I just think, you know, um, 
you know, just going into my third season here with Taylor, I think he's grown in so many areas. And, you know, he, he has taken it upon himself to, to, to be a leader. And I think he's, he's taken really good strides and, you know, he shows up every day and he's, you know, the same person, meaning, you know, he's still Taylor. He's, he, he still has a great personality, but he's still, you, you can rely and trust him to go out to practice every day and work hard and, and, um, you know, kind of lead by example um, from how you handle the process standpoint. And I think, you know, he, he's even been more verbal in which I think is really good because Taylor, Taylor has a great sense of humor and, and, he he's done a really good job of knowing when to be funny and when to kind of send the right message. So I'm, I'm excited where he's at. And I think he has a lot to be proud of and uh, he's come a long way um, in that regard. A lot was talked about um, with the head coach about the false starts. Um, and he was just talking about trying to get those neutral zone infraction calls. What are you looking for from the line this week? Um, and kind of what are your expectations in regards to either getting the calls or um, at least not getting the penalties on your side? Yeah, you know, we went into that game and we knew, you know, Jacksonville has some some good players up front who really work the cadence and, and are really trying to, you know, what we consider penetrators, really try and penetrate and dent the offensive line right from the snap. And, and, um, and so we knew cadence was going to be a big deal. Now, we, I think what happened was we got so focused and in tuned on that we, uh, we just weren't quite smart enough about it. And I know, you know, like, you know, the first one, they got Roger and that guy just flinched. He didn't even really move. He kind of just kind of wiggled a little bit, but, but we were ready. And uh, we, we took a coaching point in part of our game plan. And I think we just weren't quite, um, you know, sharp with it. So I don't want us to lose that aggressiveness. I, of course, we, we really want to, do a great job with cadence. It's to our benefit from an offensive standpoint. And Ryan does a great job with working the cadence. So we want to keep going down that road. I think we just have to be smarter.